nothing can live inside the Marianas Trench. Is that true? There are some wacky, wacky animals. Ha! Nothing can live in Marianas Trench, you say? What about... What about glowy eye octopus? Bioluminescent octopus alien! And welcome to GT Not Live, where we're not live on the couch, and I have nothing more interesting to say about that. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are in the process of continuing our exploration through the channel Gemini Home Entertainment, which, for those of you who don't know, we did one episode on this prior, where we watched a couple videos from basically this analog horror channel. So, one of the things that we've been trying lately on GT Live, GT Not Live, is theory crafting videos where we are watching and reacting to content in real time but unlike other reactors who are like huh or like ha ha or like yep can't imagine doing that one like i don't know a lot of reaction channels the reactions are actually pretty pretty poor right am i not am i speaking out of turn with that one uh, it sounds like you're trying to start beef with other channels. Beef! Starting the beef. No, I, I don't know. There's, there's, there's definitely a, a range of reaction channels, some of which are much better than others. A lot of them, though, are just like, yep, this is a thing that I just watched. Moving on to the next thing. Can I, can I title it the same thing as the other one so I can trend ride? Uh, no, we're, we're trying to add to it and, and, you know, tweak what we're, what we're reacting to in a way that is, you know, actually theory crafting about it. Uh, trying to predict what story is coming out of it, trying to piece together clues that they've uh, put into this, or just analyzing the way that they're telling a story, because I think it's something that all us creators can learn from and grow from, which is, hey, looking at other people's creative works and dissecting what works about it, what doesn't work about it, what we like, what we don't like, and that just in turn helps us as storytellers, us as creators, become better at communicating with an audience or getting our idea out into the world. Um, I always think one of the best things that you can do if you are someone who's in a creative profession or looking to, you know, build out your repertoire, uh, you know, whether it's like theater or visual arts or YouTube, digital creation, whatever, you know, consume as much as you can because that just adds to your tool belt. It helps you you know, it's not gonna, every tool isn't gonna fit for every single thing that you're doing, but having a certain subset of like, oh, this project makes me think of this, or like, oh, this project, I can I can pull in this cool reference or whatever. It, it just makes your work that much more interesting, that much more compelling, and on the whole, just makes you better rounded as a creator who's able to, to dive into a lot of different things. Um, yeah, so, so anyway, uh, like case in point, for instance, uh, again, drawing inspiration from really random things. Uh, this one came into my head, and I just want to talk about this real quick, which is, Matt, before we hopped on camera, we always do the, the audio test, right? Of, like, make sure the levels are fine, like, give me one through ten, and I do, like, high tens and low tens and whatever. Um, so I don't peek the microphone because I speak really loudly. Uh, but one of the things that I did today was I sang the song, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, which is burned into my memory from do you know the reference at no, all i'm fully lost it's fine i it's it's from sesame street okay way back I'm, in the day it I'm was familiar yeah familiar with sesame street there's, Elmo a, the gang? there's a large bird mm-hmm um, uh -huh. pretty big guy, guy in a trash can yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he's a little grouchy yeah guy with a, a unibrow aggressive unibrow which one is that that's bert bert has oh, the aggressive unibrow okay. yeah, yeah. But anyway, I always, so I'm like, what's that guy got? And then lo and behold, I grew up and I get a unibrow. I'm like, no! Um, no, but the, the long short of it is, again, like, digging deep into your, like, childhood, like, memories that you didn't even know existed. Um, I think it, from, like, the earliest days of Sesame Street, they had this, like, old disco animation in a, through a pinball machine. And it's this beautiful animation, like super dated at this point, but it's this beautiful animation of a ball going through a pinball machine and the ball hitting different numbers all set to the song. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't know why, but for some reason it is so ingrained in my memory mm. as an adult, mm. this thing that 
I, I don't even remember. Like, I didn't watch a whole lot of Sesame Street as a kid, but it's, it's just one of those things that, like, was so impressionable. And I can, like, still remember all the visuals and it's cycling through. And it's one of those memories that was recently, like, bubbled back into my head. Ooh, those are fun. Which is really fun. Another one. And then that, in turn, triggered the other domino of uh, back in the day there was this show, a science show called 321 Contact. Okay. Um, which was another one that had a really catchy thing. Uh, contact is the moment, is the feeling, when everything happens, contact. So anyway, I've been going back through all these, like, old, like, PBS era educational show the memories. music on PBS shows. Legit. Went so hard for no reason. <laughs> for the education of the public. For the broadcasting to the public. They went hard with the music, though. No, they put their heart and soul into those songs. But but I did want to ask you, Matt, uh, mm. like, obviously that's that's one from the deep recesses of mm. my mind. Is there is there one of those, like, random, like, floating around, like, completely disconnected, like, I don't know why this is stuck around in my head, but do you have anything from your memory huh. that you can, like, pull out? Well, when you, uh, for me, it's like, I don't know, there are certain phrases that if you say out loud. Yeah. It's just like. They're, they're, I mean, like, we're all in this together. Yeah. Is a high school musical song. I was going to say, oh, that's, that's high school musical. You can't say that, like, sentence anymore without, like. Without breaking out into, we're all exactly. in this you together. You do the little thing, the clap overhead. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. There it is. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> So yep. I guess that's one. My gosh. Uh, I told you that I was in High School Musical, the musical. The, the stage, show? Not the show. Oh. The musical, oh, I okay. wish. But I was in the stage show Whoa. in a, in a uh, regional, professional regional theater production. Who were you? I was Troy Bolton's okay. understudy. Okay. Um, tell you what, man. It is not pretty when you get a bunch of musical theater guys trying to do choreography with basketballs. <laughs> I was the... I, I was, like, the most athletic of everyone, which is saying a lot, first off. But, like, you know, I actually, I had grown up and I knew how to dribble a basketball and okay. how to, like, vaguely shoot it, right? Yeah. So I had some level of ball control. Oh, boy. <laughs> I would say 50% of the final performances wound up with a ball <laughs> bouncing into the audience. It's 4D. It was. It was an audience participation. And then the audience was always in these super awkward, like, you, you just know, right? Because it wasn't the biggest theater, but, like, then the audience is put into this awkward position of, like, do I throw the ball back? Like, what do I do with this ball? It's, a super, it's like in baseball games. I, yeah, right. No, right. You catch right. a foul ball and you keep it. Oh, you always keep it, right? So they catch a foul, uh, foul basketball. Uh, that I was. That was my goal for the summer was to not lose a ball. Did you do it? I didn't, actually. I was really proud. Nice. The... So as understudy, right, usually you have to fill in a lot of other parts so that way you can kind of slot into the uh, the character's role or whatever. But um, the the last thing I'll say there is, so I, while I was a competent ball handler, the opening scene had me having to do choreography on a skateboard. Ooh. And uh, that was rough. I have no experience or skill with skateboards whatsoever. And so that was... And especially as people are dancing around yeah, you. On like and a hardwood stage. On a hardwood stage. Yeah. There's no traction. It's very limited. It was, that was rough. Sounds the, difficult. I, I would say that uh, my skateboard character at the beginning <laughs> of the show was kind of rough. Which character has a skateboard? I, uh, I was just filling in a bunch of stuff. Okay. Like I, I was hopping between a lot of different characters. But I'm like, I don't remember a skater in High School Musical. Oh, I think there, I think there was. Was there? In, in the movie? I think yeah. so. It's been a long time since I watched it. But they filled it out with all of the different like tropes yeah. and th you know there was there was someone someone for everyone all yeah. all all disney approved races genders and stereotypes were there in was there the jock who likes to be yeah right there was the nerd who liked to pop and lock you yeah know, you got your bases covered uh-huh the the Classic yeah exactly. high school tropes uh-huh the the blonde drama queen you yeah. know who's the villain or whatever, the mean girl. Which, by the way, I mean, obviously not the villain of that movie. No, Sharpay is. Like, well, I'm, I'm glad you agree with the yeah. film theory that we did on okay. Sharpay not being the villain. Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, then. She had everything taken from her. She, right? I know. Yeah. By, I, like, some girl who didn't even care. Who didn't even care. By a boy and a girl who didn't even care. Yeah. And she's like, I've been working my whole life. Mm -hmm. I I get that. She did I'm get, just... she got her revenge in High School Musical, too. She did. She has the best numbers. She oh, she, I mean, she has the best numbers. But again, like, you know, all she wanted was Troy to sing with her for the talent yeah. show. And Troy's like, F you. And it's like, no, come on, give Sharpay a break. She does. Sharpay's big adventure or whatever in the fourth, yeah. fourth unofficial fourth movie or official but not as good fourth movie. Anyway, I, we'll, we'll talk High School Musical okay. on another day. Right now we have to talk about Aliens from Outer Space. Uh, aliens from Outer Space, ladies and gentlemen, that's what's going on. Uh, so for those of you who missed the first Gemini Home Entertainment, first off, what you doing? Go back and re-watch the first ever jo Gemini Home Entertainment uh, theory crafting video that we did. It was like a week and a half ago or something like that, so not too long ago. 
um, but we're working our way through some of these videos to just get a sense of what this series is all about and just immerse ourselves in the world of analog horror, which is awesome. Um, so I think to catch you up off of the three videos that we watched last time, uh, it seems like planet Earth has been invaded by these alien creatures called the uh, wood crawlers. I believe it was called the wood crawlers and they insert themselves or take over your body through their proboscis, which as we learned last week is uh, a, a nose like organ. There you go. Perfect. Through their proboscis. Uh, and then they either like simulate you or they take the form of a human. Uh, so we have kind of these like fake humans walking around. We see them kind of reassembling or building themselves up from the inside out, which is kind of creepy. And, and yeah, that's about it. They like to live under people's houses and make creepy noises. So I think that's kind of where we're sitting right now. So without any further ado, uh, let's, let's hop into these videos. So last time we watched these kind of more recent ones, one came out since then, uh, as well as the first one. A lot of you are like, watch them in order. So we're going to start watching them in order now, per your request. Uh, don't blame me. Matt was like, watch this one. And so I did. Here we go. Storm safety tips from Gemini Home Entertainment. Here we go. So the thought process here is that these are educational videos being sent back to Planet Gemini or to Gemini. Storm safety tips brought to you by Harbinge, as in like Harbinger, uh, Harbinger of Doom. Storms can be violent and dangerous in this cassette. You will learn how to protect you and your family when a severe storm hits your home. You know what a Harbinger is? Someone who brings, like you bring, you're the Harbinger. So you like, you know, you like bring it. Okay, like... well look, look it up on your phone and we'll talk about it. Part one, prepare in advance. You do not want to get caught in a storm unprepared. To prepare your home in case of a storm, follow these steps. See, this is very useful. Now that I live in North Carolina, there are actual storms here. Reinforce your home. This may involve improving structural support, replacing roof shingles, or fixing possible leaks. This is very accurate. I understand this. Install an early warning system. This will allow you to know beforehand if a storm or other danger is approaching. Recommended albedo alarm from Harbinge Technologies. All right. Hashtag spawn. Is that spawn? Oh, they have to disclose that. If that was spawn, I'm, I'm questioning. Create a storm bunker. Wow, make sure the bunker matches the following. Oh geez, 10 foot by 18 foot. Wow, okay, odd. Create concrete foundation at least eight inches thick. Whoa, that's intense. This is an intense storm bunker, man. In the center of your bunker, install large aluminum atmosphere. What, why? <coughs> Place shortwave radio next to the hemisphere. Really, is this a thing? Wait, so if I place a short... And what's that going to do? Is it going to help the antenna, like, reach better? Only turn on radio in the event of an emergency. Oh, here we go. Hello. What do we got going on? I'm so curious about this. What to do during a storm. Okay. In the event that a storm hits your home, it's important to follow these steps. Well, I'm in my storm bunker with my incredibly elaborate shortwave radio setup, so I'm not too concerned. Step one... Quietly take your family to the bunker. Makes sense. That's, that is why it's there. <laughs> your home does not belong to you now. <laughs> Turn on your shortwave radio. Great. Ignore all sound produced by the radio. These are auditory hallucinations. Oh, geez. Okay. Remain calm. Your tears are filled with salt. And salt attracts them to salt attract them part three after a storm you are dead it doesn't matter if you believe the storm has passed carefully leave your bunker to survey for damages if you believe the storm has passed oh man this is like my fallout bunker if your house has been severely damaged check for movement inside oh no <laughs> they're waiting in there oh geez do you hear the chime you're safe the storm has passed over Hmm. Okay, good to know. Look to the field. Do you see lights? Oh no. Huh? Return to your bunker. Oh jeez. Oh wow. Oh! What do we got? I don't see- I'm not seeing any lights. Oh. Oh, there's lights. Nope! Nope, return to the bunker. Go on back. Go on back. Going back to my bunker for my auditory hallucinations, please. Listen. 
auditory hallucinations. Under your feet. Crawling through the floor. Oh man, this is like Siren Head right here. Congratulations, you are now well equipped to defend you and your family against storms. There you go. Jokes on you, spooky analog horror movie. Uh, I'm uh, got a concrete floor right now. Boom, nothing's crawling through this floor unless they're crawling through straight concrete. Because I am at the foundation of the house. Because we film in a basement. Because I'm a YouTuber who works the proper way in the basement of his own home. <laughs> Not in the hype house. Okay. Oh, hey, Gemini Home Entertainment Explained. What a great recommendation. I'd like to discover more for myself first, though. Thank you. Uh, that was cool. I'm really curious about the, the aluminum or the, the dome for the shortwave radio. Like, is that an actual thing? Is it not an actual thing? I've never heard of that being used in real life. Right? I can't imagine. that. Is that just a construct for this? Is it an alien technology? I mean, I could see it, like, doing something to, like, boost a signal. Right. Like, that's what kind of my thinking mm -hmm. is... Is it because you're in a heavy, heavily reinforced storm bunker, right? So a short wave, short wave radio might struggle with that. But is it, yeah, is it bouncing it off the aluminum and then like dissipating out like the? That's weird. I don't. I feel like it has something to do with with alien technology. I, uh, that's the other thing. I'm right. It must have to do with the aliens. Because the auditory hallucinations, right? I mean, you know, aliens. What what are what are radio signals if not auditory hallucinations? Whoa. Have you thought about that? What is sound? Like, what is what is sensing in general? Whoa, man! <laughs> Whoa, dude! No, but really. No, yeah, you're right. Senses are crazy, man. Yeah. Sen like if you actually think about the logic of so much of the world, it is insane. Yeah. Like the fact that my body is composed of atoms, and atoms are ninety plus percent empty space, and yet I am a physical being. Yeah. I'm a I'm a conglomeration of trillions of cells, all individual living organisms. Yeah. That make me me. Weird stuff, man. I have... Blowing my mind. I have this fantasy where I'm, like, a dolphin, uh -huh. and I, like, experience the world as dolphins do. Uh-huh. Because I'm like, that has to be crazy. <laughs> like, experience the world. I like the dolphins are your specific... <laughs> well, like, an insect, to me, I'm like, oh, insects are such wildly different. Dolphins, like, echolocate. Like, they don't use their eyes. That is that is true. So, like, Echolocation is their different. Their experience of the world That's would be true. fundamentally so different from mine. Well, their experience of the world is, like, what you see in Daredevil, the Netflix series, where... He uses, he's mm. blind and sees everything through sound, and he has superpowers that allow him to see, like, five blocks down the street, apparently. Or it's, like, in Finding Dory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, oh, oh. Yeah? What's, what's your dolphin sound, man? I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> that's, pretty good. that's pretty good. Thanks. I've been working on my echolocation. <laughs> the one that always gets me, I will hop into more of this, but the one that always gets me when it comes to the sensing thing, though, like, outside of, like, I'm trillions of, trillions of cells in mostly empty space. That's weird. Mm -hmm. um, is the touching thing. The touching thing blows mm -hmm. my mind. The fact that you can never touch anything because your electrons are repelling the electrons of everything around you, and so even though I'm touching this and sensing that something's there, we're not actually touching. Like, there is empty space between them because the electrons are just, like, repelling each other. That's wacky, man. Yeah. That's wacky. Light, when you break down the science of life... Taste is pretty crazy, too. Yeah. Like, what is... Taste, I what get a tasting? little bit more, because taste is, like, chemical rea Like, chemical reactions, I get. But I'm, like... Like... No, I don't <laughs> no? know. No? Okay, fine. Like, taste and smell, I get. Sight is wacky, where it's like, hey, it's light beams bouncing off of something else upside down into your eye and your brain is flipping everything that you see so it makes sense to me That's really one of the easier ones for me to grapple with really but i'm like i put something on my tongue and then my brain is like spicy <laughs> <laughs> spicy <laughs> here uh the deep blue gemini home entertainment let's see let's let's learn more about aliens <laughs> even though we ourselves are the strangest creatures of them all <laughs> moral of the story the deep blue what do we got this time Ooh, okay. Geneva, Geneva production. Did you learn what Harbinger means? No, I did not. What are you doing? Go oh, look up Harbinger. It's important for your edge. I'm glad that this series has become like teaching Matt a new word. What is our word of the day? 
Harbinger is an important word for you to know, just as a human being. Just like proboscis is an important word for you to know. Thank you for thank you for joining us on our series about Gemini Home Entertainment, but also where we teach Matt new words. Our ocean is full of mystery and wonder, indeed. It is uh, like dolphins, just like dolphins. Let's take a look at some of the secrets hidden beneath the surface. So what's Harbinger mean, Matt? Uh, somebody, wait, let me... <laughs> you, just read, you just read it! You just... It's a person or a thing that announces the approach of another. Thank you, yes. Here, so they bring things. I'm here sorry. we see a school of fish swimming together as a group. Uh, Harbinger, it's, um, it's used a lot, like the... Okay, these fish are often swallowed whole by mammoths, like the blue whale. Really? I thought blue whales, I guess they're not baleen. I thought blue whales ate a bunch of like krill and plankton and stuff and like just were filter feeders. Despite its beauty, the ocean can be a very dangerous place. This is true. That's another wacky one. The fact that like we don't know what's under the ocean. Oh, I hate the ocean. We can talk about it. Okay, we'll talk about the ocean. We'll talk. I love that this series just gives us an excuse to talk about a lot of stuff. This stingray may look innocent, but it carries deadly poison. It, it contains deadly potion in its tail. Potion! Watch out for the potion! It's true though. However, rays are very gentle and generally only sing when threatened. Yeah, uh, that's a weird one. Steph and I will occasionally go scuba diving um, if we're in a location that allows it and there's instructions. We're not certified or anything. But man, we've swam through sharks and stingrays and it's, it's intense. Uh, the real danger of the ocean is not its wildlife, but the habitat itself. Yeah, it's one of those things where you, you know that they're going to leave you alone as long as you don't like bother them, but Still, you have that like, whoo, that pulse racing of like, these things are really cool to look at up close, but also, who knows, they're wild animals. They can strike at any moment. Kind of creepy. Ah, ah, the deep blue. Jacques Cousteau. Hmm. What do we think? Do we think that's an uh, audio clue? Or some sort of like... This is the Marianas Trench, the deepest place on Earth. Right? Like this. Like, we can't get down to the Marianas Trench. It's like, that's nuts. We can get to the tallest point. Marianas Trench plus the Demesia Tunnel. So... Alright, I'm curious where this is headed. So are these aliens coming from space or are they coming from below the surface? Unknown depth, right? We don't even know. That's insane. How deep does this thing go? Unknown depth. Uh -huh. Oh, we're going down. Yeah, that one from earlier. Was it a spectrograph code? Spectrogram. Because it feels like it's lingering on stuff that... Might give us a clue. That just sounds like a whale. <laughs> huh. Uh oh. What's going on? What's going on? Is it gonna get eaten? Jump scare? Nothing? Nothing can live inside the Marianas Trench. Is that true? There are some wacky, wacky animals. Ha! Huh. Oh, nothing can live in Mariana's Trench, you say? What about... What about glowy eye octopus? Bioluminescent octopus alien? Joke's on you, humanity! Ah, the ocean. See, clearly they were created from the from an atomic bomb being dropped in the area. Just like just like SpongeBob, he was created by nuclear radiation. You know, he's a mutant. They're all mutants. All right. So are they aliens? Are they from a different planet? Are they living in the ocean? Are they insects? Are they plant monsters? They seem to be a lot of things, and I don't know if this is telling one cohesive story or is this telling us a lot of different spooky creatures what do you think matt i think that there are a few creatures i think it's right yeah because i think we've seen them 
like the right we've seen them the creature that we just saw yeah in, in the in the lagoon yeah completely different creature than the one that was from like atop the houses right yeah we've seen like well although we saw the one that had like suction cups last time didn't we like it looked like giant octopus tentacles yeah that were that in the christmas one okay so there was one that had like giant tentacle kind of like suctiony things it seems to me like the there are a few different types of creatures or that they evolve in some way right mm. like maybe there's different you know stages in their evolution or they kind of like take the form of whatever environment they're put into mm. like i could see that but yeah right because we have the big spider creature yeah. we have a, we have this guy who's clearly like an underwater kind of like octopus creature mm -hmm. we have the ones that take the form of humans yeah the wood crawlers yes. like those seem to be the wood crawlers yeah um yeah, that's my that's my biggest question right now is there seem to be like we're we're hopping between a lot of different creatures. And so I'm not sure if this is all one narrative or is each one a standalone like spooky thing. I'd like it if it was all one thing because if you're throwing too many too many monsters into the mix, you just you just end up with like a fruit cake of monsters. It seems to me like it's No all... one likes fruit cake. <laughs> It seems like it's all, like, connected. It like, does seem connected through this Gemini like, Home Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah, there does seem to be an overarching thrust to it. I'm just mm -hmm. curious where it's going. Anyway, yeah, Harbinger. It's, an, it's a good one. So I'm glad we've all learned that Harbinger yes. is someone who is kind of like a portent of something like, to come. Um, um, the guy with the horse with the lanterns. Paul, Paul Revere. Yeah. I'm, I'm like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Paul Revere. He's a harbinger. He was a harbinger of the British coming. There we go. That is correct. There we go. Good usage of the word. Thank uh -huh. you. Well done. Thank you. Um, in Mass Effect 3, there is the harbinger who is kind of like the, the or I think it's uh, Mass Effect 2. Uh, he is the harbinger alien who's kind of like the figurehead of kind of these bigger, scarier aliens to come, the Reapers. So, and he is outright named the harbinger. Gotcha. So there you go. Mass Effect 2, if you, it's a great game. Okay. Just so you know. I'll take your word. I know, I know you don't play video games. It's fine. Artificial computer learning. Let's go. Look at us. We're flying through these. Perfect. Gemini Home Entertainment, friends. So did we learn about the ocean? Did we learn anything? Regnad Computing. Regnad. All of these names have something. What is this? Da oh, danger. There it is. It's danger backwards. I'm like, all of these names have something going on. Like... The uh, Harbinge Entertainment and stuff. So, Danger Computing. Artificial Computer Learning. A demonstration of artificial thought. So, now are we dealing with sentient computers? Like, computer intelligence? Is this William Afton? Is Glitch Trap going to infect my brain? For the past four years, Regnad Computing has been developing artificial computer intelligence using new revolutionary methods. These methods have led to produce the world's most advanced artificial intelligence to date. Oh, man. As a test of this intelligence's abilities, we gave it the task of creating an original, intelligible story in the format of a children's storybook. Three iterations of the story are going to be shown, illustrating the creation process utilized by artificial intelligence. Okay, this is cool. This is like, you know, Google Translate sings whatever song. You know, Google Translate sings Firework by Katy Perry. Okay, iteration one. Jack. Jack leapt over the river. Okay. Mary to follow together. So is this Jack and Jill went up the hill? Travel, follow the secret. Ah, Jack the river, it is dead. This is, see, this is what I'm going to read to Oliver tonight when it's time for bed. Jack the river, it is dead. All right, Ollie, good night. We'll see you in the morning. First iteration tests heed insufficient results, though patterns and story consistency consistency are clearly visible but unrefined yeah that's not could use a little smoothing over i'm missing some of the character motivations here so iteration two jack leapt over the river great mary followed close behind see now we're getting some relationships here this is this is getting compelling now they are searching for the secret place here it is i hear <laughs> I hear you. See, a little non sequitur at the end, kind of confused by the, the twist. It's like if J.J. Abrams wrote a kid's story. The intelligence builds upon its previous iteration. Uh, okay, here we go, iteration three. 
Jack left over the river. Really solid on the, the starting action of this story. Uh, there goes Mary down the street. Just launches her off. The secret place will keep us safe. Oh, is it a storm bunker? I'm familiar with those. They're coming. The river flows, but not with water. <laughs> Oil. Mud. Oh, it's blood, isn't it? The intelligence seems to diverge from its original path and begins a more complex branch of sentences. Great. Uh, I'm excited where this one's going. This is fun. This isn't an iteration? Oh, there it is. Iteration 4. Nope. Jack heard it again. Where's the... Jack left over the river. Jack heard it again. There is a voice from space. Space. Jack, do you see me? I have become something else. Oh no! Did you become a wood crawler? Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> really losing the thrust of this narrative, honestly. Where'd the river go? What is the secret place? You're leaving a lot of Chekhov's guns hanging in this story. Listen to the silver box. The stars are moving now. Do you see the hungry eye? Here I am. Ooh, hello. Okay, visual, hold up, hold up. What is this? Visual distortion, okay, hold up. I just don't wanna lose this right now. Oop. Okay, so there was, before we cut away, what is that black thing back there? I don't know, I don't know what it is. I could like pop it into Photoshop, but I don't think it's gonna yield anything. And then here, okay. Visual distortion, intent. Weird, what is this? Oh, wacky. Yeah, did the computer generate this part of the story? The video should have demonstrated to you the capabilities of Regnan Computing's artificial intelligence. <laughs> we hope to have this technology available for commercial and personal use within the yard. Oh, well, sign me up for a beta copy of that puppy. I'm right there. Regnad Computing. So what is this? So is this intent alive? Visual distortion. So... Is this the eye of the, is this the evil eye? The, the evil eye that was, the, the hungry eye. The stars are, listen to the silver box, the stars are moving now. Do you see the hungry eye? Here I am. So is this the hungry eye? And it's going for that circle. It's alive, and then this. What is this? I think that's the hungry eye. This is, right, this feels like the hungry eye, doesn't it? It also resembles the octopus thing from Mariana's Trench. Yeah. And it's growing. It's just growing this kind of like other eye on top of it. Yeah, this, I mean, this is the hungry, this is clearly the hungry eye. I guess it's chasing down things. Also, there's a safe spot in the river. The secret space. Huh. I don't know about that one. That was probably the most lore heavy of any of them, really. Well, the, the line, listen to the silver box, sticks out to me. Yeah, in what way? Like, what do you think of? Uh, it seems to me like the computer is the silver box, right? Really? You think so? Yeah. I mean, listen to the silver box. Do you see the hungry eye? Like, there's the hungry eye. So it seems to me huh. like whatever that is yeah. sort of took hold of the AI. Interesting. And is trying to speak to the user. Interesting. Like, listen to this. Yeah. Know? No, that's fair. To me, listen to the silver box... 
Because I don't think of computers as silver, right? Like, that's the weird thing to me. Mm. To me, silver box is like radio. Mm. Like, if I'm thinking of what are silver cubes, rectangular prisms, whatever in my life, like old school radio, going back to the storm safety tips, I think back to like the silver box of a an old time radio. And it's something that you listen to. Um, but I could see your, I mean, I can see how you would think it, it's it's a computer too. Like, especially those older computers yeah. that are very boxy. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Right? I think we got to keep going. Yeah. I think, I think we got to dive in some more solar. Let's learn about our solar system, friends. Maybe this will teach us where it's all coming from. Oh my gosh, look. Look at this great film theory. Oh my gosh, we should watch that. That's great. That's a great episode. Man, whoever produces content for that channel is stellar. <laughs> Our solar system! Let's do it! Oliver's favorite planet is Saturn, in case anyone's watching. It's the correct choice, because it's got rings and it's really cool. Speaking of weird things that blow your mind, the fact that the entire planet of Saturn is so not dense that it can float on the ocean, crazy. Sun, situated 149 million miles away, the sun provides light for our entire solar system. Without it, Earth would be a barren, frozen rock. Yeah. Oh, man, these are such great educational videos. What's your What's your choice of planet, Matt? Uh, I like Jupiter. Jupiter is always the... I like... Jupiter's got some really cool moons. Jupiter and Saturn always duking it out. Yeah. Mercury, smallest planet in our solar system, also the hottest, one of the smallest planets, also the hottest, sits perilously close to the sun and only takes 87 days to orbit around it, which is crazy. Mercury gets a pretty bad rap. You think so? Yeah. I think Mercury's, like, it's first in line, it's pretty cool. I don't think anyone's, like, a big Mercury fan. I mean, it's it's a big hot rock, like, it's hard, it doesn't have a lot of defining features outside of being number one, you know? It is the most, like, sustainable planet other than the Earth in our solar system. Is it really? I didn't yeah. know that. It'd be easiest to live on Mercury. I mean, that makes sense. Really, more so than Mars? Yeah. Huh. I think so. Are you? Cause Mars, are you? Are you? Are you? Are you spreading fake news right I'm, now, man? I took a, a strom, astronomy one hundred and one. <laughs> I, I took astronomy, geez. <laughs> I took astrogies. Oh yeah. Trying, I, I really believe the guy trying, who remembers the class trying, name. Trying to cover up the fact that I came really close to saying astrology. I know. I took astrology <laughs> back in the day. I know that moon card is is sending me down a perilous path. No, but I think the the atmosphere of Mars would be the easiest to live on. Yeah. But as far as like living on a planet's surface, yeah. I think that Mercury is the best suited. Okay, because I was gonna say Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere because the sun is like burned it all away right. because it's so close. Isn't that it? Could be. Let us know down in the comments yeah. below how off and dumb <laughs> we are. Uh, because I do know that Venus, Venus is closest, isn't it? That Venus is closest in general to Earth. But because it ha it's basically like this poison gas planet, it, yeah. it, it's completely out of the... Like, it is the harshest mm -hmm. of all of them because of how dense this, like, poison gas cloud around it is. And so... Wait, okay. I think I misremembered completely. I think that the atmosphere of Venus, like, yeah. is the most suited to humans. Yeah, I think that... Yeah, okay. But because it's made of, like, literal yeah. poison gas. Well, it's... Uh, Venus is, like, the Earth if climate change continues. Yes, I, I do believe that that super, is what they usually point hot to. Hot carbon. Yeah, it's it, it, right, and the whole planet is just like it's it's the hottest planet because it is just trapping a bunch of like heat, and all the greenhouse gases can't get out or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Okay, and no one, uh, and then like Uranus and Neptune, they're too close to it. Like no one knows the difference between Uranus yeah. and they're just like out there, and they're like, oh, those are the blue ones, the cold ones. Yeah, and you're you're they're Uranus, not Pluto. Just unfortunate name. No one's going to be like, that's my favorite. Well, and also, like, yeah, that's, yeah. No, no one really stands those planets, unfortunately. Neptune's pretty big. Neptune is big. Neptune has a ring, too. Yeah, right? And no one appreciates it. Yeah. I feel like everyone kind of dismisses those latter planets. Or is it Uranus? That has the ring? I yeah. think. I think it's Neptune. I think Neptune is more blue and has the, like, light ring. Check it. Check us. So that way the internet completely doesn't call us out. It's been a while. As the second brightest object in the night sky, Venus can sometimes be seen from Earth. This is, yep, cool. The average surface temperature on the planet is 462 degrees Celsius, which is a high number, but also completely meaningless to me <laughs> since I run off of Fahrenheit. I wish I could do those conversions better in my head. It, uh, whenever I'm writing scripts, I still have to go with like conversion calculators and stuff. I wish I was faster at them. But you learn. Uh, Uranus has rings. Ah, it is Uranus? Shoot. Yeah. All right. 
Fair enough. They're vertical. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Earth is one of the only planets in our solar system capable of supporting life. With 71% of the planet covered in water, it's a miracle that we can all fit. That's cute. I've been to those Midwestern states, still a lot of room. Shocking how big those states are. Uh, Mars, red planet. It's mostly barren desert world. Uh, pieces of Mars have fallen to Earth in the form of meteorites. Oh. Hmm. Jupiter! The gas giant Jupiter has no solid surface, which makes it impossible to stand on, which is crazy to think about. It's just a big ball of gas. How wacky is that? Large spot on the planet is known as the Great Red Spot. It is not an eye. That's interesting. Is Jupiter the hungry eye? No, it's not really. Although mostly a gas giant, Saturn, uh, there may be a large solid core deep inside the planet. Really? This planet's prominent rings are quite a sight to behold. They are the gateway. Ah. Ooh, what did we see? Ooh, interesting. Did you see it, Matt? Right there? Yeah. Huh. And it's very intentionally moving. So, whatever it is... Uh, look up Gemini. Is Gemini like a... Because I know Saturn has like a, a kajillion moons. Um, is Gemini a Saturn, a Saturnal moon? A Saturnine moon? Saturnine? Is that the proper adjective form? Uh, I will get back to you. Great, thanks. It does seem to be like what they've been using for Gemini through there. Uranus! This planet is classified as an ice giant and is the coldest planet in the solar system. Huh, that's it. Really? Uranus is the coldest. That's odd. I wonder why. Unlike most planets, it rotates on its side. See, this is, this is just educational content, friends. It's like I'm watching Bill Nye the Science Guy through the twilight zone. Neptune! Looks like a frowny face right now. There's, there's his eye. There's his sad mouth. Cannot unsee. Oh, why so glum, Neptune? It's because everyone forgets you. Large storm rages in the planet, called the Great Dark Spot. It is the lens. Neptune has been mutated. Has it now? Has it been mutated? Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh weird! <laughs> I did not... I did not expect that one to come. Hold up. What happened there? The oh, it's just a storm? Weird! <laughs> it's just Neptune with his frowny face and a bruised eye. Poor Neptune. Huh. Ooh, hello. Are you a new one? The Iris. Not familiar with that one. That does not fit in my uh, my very educated mother just sent us nine pizzas. It is with us now. Laughing at us! Well, that's not nice. Whoa! Cool! Oh, jeez! Wild! Behold. Ah, here we go. Okay. Oh no. That didn't look good. Well, this uh, pretty solidly defines the whole alien thing. Is that Neptune? So it's coming from Neptune? Pluto! Aww. Smallest planet on our... It's not a planet anymore. It's so sad. Pluto is only 1,188 kilometers in a radius. No one knows what that means. <laughs> in America. <laughs> we don't know. Although it hangs on at the edge of our solar system, this planet isn't going anywhere. Whoa, whoa. It's like I'm watching Wonder Woman in... Uh, Wonder Woman's appearances in Snyder Cut. Whoa, whoa. Weird. The iris. The iris, huh? That's cool. Iris is pretty creepy. So what you learned, Matt? Uh, I learned that I that eyes really freak me out. Yeah, did the <laughs> iris freak you out? That was that was legitimately very surprising. Yeah. That was awesome. I, it like made me nauseous. Re yeah, really? I felt like physically ill watching that. Wow. I don't know why. Huh, that's yeah. really interesting. I just thought it was really cool. I'm like, oh this I did first off I didn't see that coming. And also I have not 
seen anything like that before. Like, that was really well done. I was legitimately surprised and really excited about so that. I've, I've done some research behind the scenes. Okay, you've done some research. What did you learn? The iris, I believe, is going to be pretty important. Really? As a concept, yes. Interesting. Something that we should keep track of. Okay, it's, is it the hungry eye? Perhaps. Hungry eyes. It's just The Irish just needs lunch, man. He's just hangry. Just, just needs... He hungers. Just like Oliver hungers. He hungers. He hungers. It, hung, it hungers. Any other research? Did you, did you learn it? I'm glad that you researched that and not like... <laughs> what Harbinger means? Yeah, come No, on. there's no reason why I would need to ever know that. <laughs> you say that. SAT, man. SATs. When, when am I ever going to take the SAT again? <laughs> I've, I've, I, done, I've I, done my part. We're, we're going to have... You just asked. You asked for it. Now it's no. going to be an upcoming GT Live. No. Matt, Pat, and Matt. Matt and Matt, take uh, the SATs. <laughs> Let's do it. I love standardized tests. I'm such a nerd. That would be so boring. <laughs> would it, though? I think so. I don't think so. I don't know if there was like some stakes on the line or something, maybe. Okay. We could come up with something. We'll see. I don't know. I'll think about it. The SAT. I was... I, I did really well on my SAT. Did you? Yeah. Nice. I just don't ever want to take it again. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe maybe we'll have to take an SAT test. Should we do one more? Yeah, I think so. Do we have time for one more? We do. We made a good dent in these. That would be what one, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. We're we're burning through them pretty quick. They're they're fast. Oh, geez. We're already starting off with weird stuff. I want to learn more about this iris. I gotta tell you that much. What is this one? This is camp information video. Weird. Oh, interesting. Okay, real quick. I am calling this out, though. So, we see Gemini. So, every time we're seeing this picture of Gemini, uh, this little belly button right here, which is clearly the belly button of Gemini, uh, I think that is what we saw at the end of the last video. So, we saw that blue planet erupt or shoot some sort of, like, weird space beam into, you know, past the other planets or whatever. My guess is that this belly button right here is what we witnessed the space beam coming from, right? Yeah. I wonder if you poke that belly button on Gemini, if it goes, hoo hoo, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. You don't poke his belly button. You're that... not putting finger in the belly button for the Pillsbury Doughboy. What are you doing? You're poking his little belly. His belly button? No. Does Pil Pillsbury Doughboy has a button, belly button, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't it? think you're, like, going in there. Well, I'm not, not aggressively <laughs> going in, but you're still touching belly. It's like the button. It's called the belly button. It no, is but... a button on the belly. <laughs> you press the button on the belly, Matt. That's what it's there for. I'd like, to, I would like to believe that you're not inserting your finger into his belly button every time. <laughs> it makes him giggle. He enjoys it. Woohoo! <laughs> now I need to go back and watch one of those commercials to see how invasive the belly button touch is. Oh, uh, bad touch, belly button. <laughs> Woohoo, Gemini. All right. Moonlight Acres Family Camp, 1930. Okay. So if there's alien activity in this one, which presumably there is, it says that they've actually been here with us for a really long time, since at least 1930. Come visit Moonlight Acres. Since our founding, Moonlight Acres has been devoted to family and creating memories. Mm, beautiful. Majestic. Our campground is as pristine and beautiful as ever, a relic from the past. Many of the original camp buildings remain untouched since the initial closure. Closure. Let's look at some of the activities of the camp. So, real quick. Uh, this might be overthinking it. It might not mean anything, but wasn't the Christmas video... Is this maybe like the campground or like the log cabin or the Christmas video? Because didn't the Christmas video happen in the woods too? I think the Christmas video was in Wisconsin. Mm. So okay. if there are any leads in this as to it being what in state Wisconsin, is it? that might yeah. do it. Well, and also the first one was Minnesota. So, I mean, they, they're everywhere. Let's look at some of the activities our camp has to offer. Death. Death and more death. Alien possession. Activities. Hmm. Looks like fun. Hiking. With so many expansive trails, hiking is a regular occurrence at our camp. Yep, fair. Just make sure you don't get lost. Accurate. Some of those trails, man, are hard to follow. Steph and I have gotten lost a couple times. 
Archery. Archery has been a tradition throughout our camp's lifetime, with the targets getting more extravagant every year. Okay. It's an odd thing to talk. More extravagant targets. Canoe trips. Always a blast. Accurate. I love canoeing. And let's not forget about our famous Lights in the Sky event. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hmm. Accommodations. No need to pitch a tent. Moonlight Acres has tons of places to lay your head. Sleep in luxury at one of our family cabins, completely burrow free. Huh, so they're all... For the fun, we have separate boy and girl cabins, each with fun activities all year round. So they're acknowledging that the burrows exist. Feeling rustic, stay at one of the campground's original cabins, which are frequently cleaned and always cozy. It's rough, man. Each and every cabin at Moonlight Acres is beautifully decorated. Oh yeah, I, I mean they might just be reusing assets, but this is definitely the asset that was from the storm episode. You know, the, the uh, watch alarm. With the most up-to-date safety technology, you can rest assured knowing that our, your security is in our hands. So this is con- oh, ooh, hey. Hello. Nope. Don't like the way this is headed. Do not answer the knocking at the door. I don't like this one. This, this, see, this is what makes me uncomfortable. Just completely disconnected from anything that came before. And we've moved on. <coughs> Excuse me. Mythos. What was the door? I want to feel more about the door. The, do the door makes me really uncomfortable. An important part of Moonlight Acres' legacy is its mythos. Tall tales have been told from person to person throughout the camp's lifetime. So this is, again, 1930 it was established. 1935, rumors of strange, well-dressed men visiting the camp began to make the rounds. Ah, oh, bejeeman. It said that the men would ask to enter the camp administrator's cabin every night for years. You know. There are other reasons to explain that, potentially. One night, a deal was made with the strange men, and they left the camp, never to be seen again. Weird. I mean, another popular myth arose in the 30s, when campgoers began to have sightings of skinwalkers. Skinwalkers! Not to be confused with wood crawlers? Probably one and the same, right? Oh, oh god. It's not even moving or doing anything creepy, it's just something about the shape of it. Weird. I really hate this door. I really hate this door. I don't want to know what's behind that door, but I do. I don't. I hate it. Nope. 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 Vessels. Men's club supervisor, answered door. Assistant activity supervisor, answered door. Head of camp satisfaction, answered door. Answered door, answered door. Asked to enter. Oh, God! Oh, I hate it. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. No. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that might be the scariest one of all of them at this point. Okay, wait. This is, this is horrific. Okay, so, so all these people answered the door and were vessels. They were taken over. Ooh, 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 ooh. So this is, okay, so this seems to be our mother alien. Like this, the octopus, the undersea octopus that lives in Mariana's Trench appears to be the main alien of which everyone else kind of spawns off of, it seems like, what we're getting at here. Um... Okay. And this is and this is the hungry eye, I, I guess. You know, the thing that was alluded to in the computer story. 
uh, that we got to see kind of the silhouette of. It's underwater in the big blue one. Ask to enter. Oh, God. Oh, it's, oh, I hate this so much. Oh, it's so horrific. Now, what is this? It has whiskers. Right? It's like a giant rat or something. Oh. It's, yeah, it looks like it's a giant rat. I don't know if that's like a stock image or if this is... It does Unless those are like teeth or tentacles, but it does look like, like I see a giant rat face. And then finally we got, okay, so the door opens and then we cut away, right? Oof. Nope. 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 Hate that. No thanks. No thank you. <sighs> That's the thing, like, they did a good job with that one. Speaking of things that, speaking of things that work and don't work, but in this case absolutely worked, the fact that that one was so still and there's no moving images or anything really anywhere and then all of a sudden, like, I didn't expect anything to move in that, and then to see something move, to hard cut to something moving that aggressively, and it being that spindly spider leg thing. No thanks! Nope! Done! X out. <sighs> Alright. So what have we learned here today, ladies and gentlemen? We learned uh, how to build a storm bunker. We learned shortwave radios might be enhanced via aluminum domes. Or, you know, you might be summoning the aliens to you. One of the two. I'll let you be the judge of which. We learned what the word harbinger means. And uh, we learned that, you know, we don't know as much as we probably should about the planets in our solar system. <laughs> let me know what you think down in the comments below. What freaked you out more? Did that freak you out as much as it freaked me out? Or are you more freaked out by Iris? Yeah, no, that didn't get me that bad. Really? Yeah. It's so interesting what scares people. It's like puppety. See, and that to me was so much scarier than... I, I thought Iris was cool, and that was, like, horrific. Interesting. Right? Yeah. It's really interesting to see what gets people. But anyway, tell us down in the comments below, which one got you? Puppety? <laughs> Puppety spindly legs or Iris? Anyway, there you go, friends. Watch your backs. Listen out for any auditory hallucinations. Make sure you go to the secret place, and we'll see you in the next video. So remember, it wasn't, an, it wasn't a theory, and it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video. A video for you. Good luck out there. Mm.